All right, we're just tuning in. It's Tuesday's edition of Morning Delight, and we're moving on now to the motivational segment. And for that, Daniel Adelesi is already here with me, and today he's going to be looking at leadership and responsibility. Good morning, Fola. Good morning. Great to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here again. <laughs> All right, so um, we're continuing in the series yes. of um, leadership. Leadership. And we're looking at leadership and, and how responsibility. responsibility. Well, we have to look at that because a lot of people don't understand that leadership is not fun fair. Mm -hmm. Leadership is not what you do like a celebrity. Exactly. You can serious be business. serious business. You can be a celebrity and not be in the business of leadership mm -hmm. because celebrities, you, see, you just come out and people admire you, people appreciate you, mm -hmm. and you know you can just go about enjoying the ovation. Yeah. But in leadership, it's not like that. In leadership, the ovation can be for one minute and you have 30 minutes of serious stress where if you don't take a decision on that moment, you can have 30 people who are going to lose their lives. Mm -hmm. Now imagine a situation where they said a Nigerian was going to be killed in an Asian country for dr drug dealing and all that. And this was a decision that had to do with bilateral trade. Mm -hmm. Now if the president of Nigeria or the embassy refuses to take a decision immediately, mm -hmm. that Nigerian is going to die. Now, some people will take it up against that country, and then there's going to be a problem, which will be a national issue now, mm -hmm. not just about one person taking drugs and all that. So, leadership is serious business. Okay. And we need to look at it. All right. So, I'll just let you do your thing. Good morning once again. Fala Daniela Delese is my name, and I'm glad you're watching because this is a series that we really need to pay so much attention to. Leadership is responsibility, and leadership is not fun fair. Now, a few years back, or let me say so many years back, we still churches stood right in front of the nation of England and they had to convince them of the need to face the monster that was right in front of them they stood a chance of winning the battle and they also stood a chance of losing the battle and if they lost the battle it meant that they were going back to slavery but Winston Churchill had to take courage and tell the people never never give up at some point in time the people who were the coal miners in the nation were admiring the soldiers because everybody seemed to pay attention to the soldiers and everybody was celebrating the soldiers but because everybody was celebrating the soldiers the people who were supposed to be coal miners wanted to join the army as well and he knew that if the coal miners should join the army there will be a problem because some people need to work at the coal mines so that the people at the battlefront can actually succeed so Winston Churchill had to come out and convince the coal miners of their importance in the battle despite the fact that they were not the ones fighting the battle so what he did was to give them the order of importance in the battle that the people who were fighting so he said to them when we have to do an arrangement of the people who are fighting the battle we will not call the soldiers first we will call the people who planned the battle we will call the soldiers then we will also call the coal miners because they are the ones who made the battle a success when the coal miners heard what Winston Churchill said they never even thought about joining the army again proudly but with tears on their faces they went back to work because they had been given the courage they had been given the confidence to understand that their own work in the coal mine was a part of the victory of the guys who were actually fighting at the battlefront. And they also realized that for the battle to be won, everybody does not have to be at the battlefront. But that became a success simply because Winston Churchill understood that leadership is a responsibility. Now imagine a situation where Abraham Lincoln had to fight strongly for the unity, for the unition of the United States of America. Some people wanted to break away. Some people were talking about the Confederates. Yet Abraham Lincoln had just taken office and he was faced with a civil war right in front of him. Would you be talking about fun fair would you be talking about partying would you be talking about merry-go-rounding in the states when somebody had to face a nation that is about to break away abraham lincoln had to think night and day to make sure that he kept the united states together leadership is responsibility you need to understand that when you come into leadership you're coming in to serve the people you need to understand that when you come into leadership you're offering yourself to the service of the nation and what that means is that sometimes you'll have sleepless nights and what that means is 
is that sometimes the burden of other people becomes your burden. When you think about yourself as a follower, when you eventually become a leader, you cannot just think about yourself. You think about other people before you think about yourself. That is what leadership is all about. Leadership is selfless and not selfish. So we need to understand that for a nation like Nigeria to change for whatever reason, we need people who are selfless. We need people who understand that leadership is service. We need people who understand that when you go into leadership, you're going into a place of stress. You're not going into a place of fun fear. You need to understand that when you go into leadership, it's going to be a lot of personal sacrifice. I remember when I used to be a senior prefect back then in my secondary school, as small as that sounded, most times I couldn't sleep when every other person had a challenge. Every time there was a there was an issue in the dormitory, though we had a dormitory officer, they wouldn't go for the dormitory officer. They always came to me because they knew the senior prefect is in the dormitory. Even when I was ill, nobody came to look after me and say, oh, he is ill, let's go after him. They were only concerned about the responsibility that I had as a senior prefect. Now that gave me a broader perception of what leadership is all about. Leadership is less of you and more of the people. If we have people who understand that leadership is less of you and more of the people. The, the leadership of this nation will be an effective leadership. For us to have effective leadership, we must have leadership that understands vision. We must have the leadership that understands focus. We must have the leadership that understands strategy and tactics. Because it's not enough for us to talk about vision. It's not enough for us to talk about rebranding. It's not enough for us to say that we have a focus. We must also have a strategy for implementation. Let's stop having the kind of leaders who all also create a vision just for the elites to conceive we need a vision that can reach out to the people at the grassroots we need a vision that can help people I read the story of Jimmy Carter and Jimmy Carter was former president of the United States somebody needed to implement a course of action and he said okay because he has this relationship with Jimmy Carter he took the vision to Jimmy Carter and was asking Jimmy Carter which one of these things would you like to be to do for us and you know what Jimmy Carter said he said I won't do one of of it I won't do two of it I'll do everything for you now a lot of people felt that Jim Carter was just going to come to that venue and do a ceremonial cutting of the ribbons and all of that, that like what you see a lot in Africa but no Jim Carter was not there to take official photographs he went there slept with the people at the basements for one whole week and he carried armor hitting the wall hitting the bricks because they wanted to build homes for homeless people this was the former president of a whole United Nation of the whole United states coming down to sleep in the same basements with people when he could stay in hotels when he could walk around with bodyguards and all that but he stayed with the people he didn't only stay with them to supervise them he carried armors and he was actually hitting the bricks himself and apart from that he used this influence to get what other people need today in leadership a lot of people need to understand the difference between connection and influence connection is who you know but influence is who knows you and whose life you're impacting we need the kind of leaders who understand that they don't always have to run after the connection that they need but create an influence so that they can give platforms to other people send me an email ediblepen at yahoo.com but always for always remember leadership is selfless and not selfish thank you hmm. okay all right uh, thank you once again for for that but then i think we should qualify that a little maybe we should call it true leadership true leadership <laughs> is what is actually selfless because the, the kind of leadership we're experiencing in this country mm -hmm. today um, does not repeat selflessness. I usually have a challenge no. when some people say bad leadership mm -hmm. or true leadership. Mm -hmm. The reason is, in my several years of the study of leadership, I realized that there is nothing like bad leadership. You are either a leader or you are not. Okay. Okay. In my study of leadership mm -hmm. and in my close follow-up follow on John Maxwell, on Stephen Covey, on Sam Adem, and some of the other leadership experts, mm -hmm. we have realized that there is nothing like true leadership or fake leadership. You are either a leader or you are not. So the reason a lot of people say fake leaders or uh, you know bad leaders is because some people think they are leaders simply because they have a position. Mm -hmm. It's not the position that makes you... Now, one of the things we came up with is that with or without the position, what can you do? So if you actually influence people with or without the position, mm -hmm. then you're a leader. Okay. But if you always need the position to create influence, then in the first place you don't understand what influence really is. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the nation today. Somebody like Obafemi Awolowo never became the president. 
but we have so many people today who are governors and presidents and they still make reference to him and they still say because of this man i became who i am today and so many people are pointing to obafe maulo and say if not for obafe maulo i would never have been educated mm -hmm. somebody like bolaige before he died they used to call him aruli Awolo. Why were they calling him Aruli Aulo? He was never related to him in any way. He is from a Salke. But like, is, I mean, Aulo is from a Kenya. How do they connect? Mm. But because of influence. So we need to understand that you are either a leader or you are not a leader. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. However, I do know that leadership comes with a lot of responsibility. It is actually responsibility. And it is burden. A lot of heaven. I've had an occasion for the first time when I was made a leader over a group and all of that. Okay. And well, for the first few hours, I was excited. But okay, <laughs> in the next but minute, at the end of the day, I sincerely wished because you, you, you know, your I pocket, didn't take it up your pocket feels the leadership yeah, responsibility because the failure of every team member is actually on you. Nobody, nobody even talks about the team. Yeah. Nobody talks about everybody talks about you. Person. And that was, okay, for instance, when I read about Abraham Lincoln, one of the things that the author said was mm -hmm. each time the army was failing, Abraham Lincoln accepted blame mm -hmm. for the failure of the army at the battlefront. Mm -hmm. He was not the one fighting, mm -hmm. he was not the one strategizing, but he accepted responsibility. But a lot of people, you know, we play the blame game. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one. After all, I can't be everywhere. After all, I'm not the one. But you're the one issuing orders. Mm -hmm. You're the one taking the utmost decisions. The, everything ends up on your desk. So whatever you say is fine. And that's why you must be prepared. After all, they are giving you 100000 for a city. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't forget responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that makes sense. Okay, we're going to take a quick time out. When we return, we will be talking change. We'll be right